live from ABC7, this is SportsZone. Well, hi, everybody. Hope you're having a great afternoon and welcome to the World Cup edition of the Sports Zone here on ABC7. Join us throughout the Copa de Mundial, former National Soccer Player of the Year and one of the pioneers of American soccer, Paul Caligiri, is back. You know, Paul scored what many considered the most important goal in American history. It's tab as a shot heard around the world on November 19, 1989. His goal against Trinidad and Tobago sent Team USA to the 1990 World Cup. Their first cup appearance in 40 years and recently Sports Illustrated has it as their number one most significant goals in U.S. history. Paul, talk about the shot that started it all for U.S. soccer. Well, I, it was a moment in time, obviously a different place in time than U.S. soccer is now. And, uh, you know, I knew how great the World Cup was and we wanted to get there. And that was my opportunity to score and deliver what I needed to do for my teammates. And uh, who, who knew then that it would be delivered to be the best goal. You never in get the tired history. watching yeah. that. No, of course not. And I love the way you just said it. It <laughs> makes me sound even better, so I appreciate it. All right, Paul, this year, the uh, 20th FIFA World Cup, the modern technology will be put to use in this year's version to help make sure the right outcome is reached. And as we've already seen so far in the tournament, we still have issues with an old problem, human error. In the 2010 World Cup round of 16, England's Frank Lampard thinks he just tied the game against Germany. Everyone saw the ball cross the line, except for the referee, Germany went on to win the game. This year, we will not have that issue as World Cup will use goal line technology. Seven cameras are set up at the goal line, recording 500 frames per second. Paul, it's about time this has happened, right? It really is. I mean, we saw this with a Germany-USA game in 2002 World Cup, so that kind of puts it in perspective how long we've been waiting to see this happen. We've seen it in other sports like the NFL, and I'm glad to see it now being launched here in the World Cup. Even Major League Baseball, all the sports are going to the modern technology. It didn't take long for the refs to be put in the spotlight. In the opening match, a controversial call going against Croatia, giving Brazil a free kick. Then in the second match of the tournament, Mexico scores twice, twice against Cameroon, but are disallowed for being offsides, which El Tri was not. Now, Paul. This is human error. We have to live with, or can something done about that? Well, I mean, I don't think there's any technology that could improve off offsides. I mean, that's really where it comes down to. Um, we have, after the fact, this is not an offsides play. Clearly, the Mexican players on. Delsano scores a nice goal. Mm -hmm. You know, and up to this point, I mean, it's Mexico is dominating. So it's dis disappointing that. These kind of situations happen, but it is human error, and there's really little you can do about it. Of course, it. Mexico got their three points. Uruguay captured the first World Cup title way back in 1930. Then 20 years later, La uh, Celeste won its second World Cup against Brazil in Brazil. It was and still is the only loss for Brazil on home soil in World Cup or World Cup qualifying match. Today, Uruguay began their quest for a third gold trophy against Costa Rica. Off to Fortaleza for the sixth match of the World Cup in the 10th minute. An early chance for Costa Rica, Diego Lugano with the handball, but foul is called in Oscar Duarte for a push in the back. Then in the 22nd minute, free kick for El Celeste, and Costa Rica is called for a penalty in the box. Paul, did the refs make the right call there? Yeah, this is a great call. I mean, obviously the player, the defender, puts his both hands around his waist, and the, and the player just takes the fall. And, and maybe embellishes a little bit, but you got to do that. Show the ref, yep, I'm being held, I'm being fouled, and that was a good call by the ref. That led to a penalty kick for Edison Cavani, and the man they call El Matador gives Uruguay the lead with a well placed ball. Los Ticos with a couple of good chances later in the first half. Alvaro Pereira misses a header on the open net, then Uruguay's keeper Fernando Musilera comes up with a nice save to keep his sheet clean. Second half, Costa Rica continues to attack. Gets their chances, but Muslera is there to stop Oscar Dorotti's header. Keep it 1 0. Then in the 54th minute, Paul Los Ticos finally breaks through for the equalizer. Yeah, this is a, a great little play. The guy makes uh, Joe Campbell, look at his first touch right there on the chest and does a half volley, just blasts the ball past the keeper. And this is a great angle because you can see how powerful that shot is. And the keeper has absolutely zero chance of saving it. And a couple of minutes later, off the set piece, Fernando Muslera can't stop Oscar Duarte's header. This time, he flies in to give Costa Rica a 2-1 lead. Paul, in the 84th minute, Los Ticos puts the game away. Well, that's just a fine touch. It's a great through ball. The player goes on one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. But look at that placement. Look at that nice little touch right past the keeper's foot. 
And uh, it was just a wonderful touch, wonderful goal. Costa Rica opens up play with a 3-1 win over Uruguay. Earlier in the day, Group C match Colombia and Greece from Belo Horizonte, and it doesn't take Los Cafaretos to find the net. Fifth minute, Juan Cuadrado, the cross to Pablo Romero. He trickles ball in, early 1-0 lead. Paul, Greece needs a better effort from their goalkeeper, Orestes Carneris. Yeah, and we really look at this finish. It trickles by. The defender makes a, 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 a deflection, but right there, look at this play. Look at the dummy. The oh. dummy play really sets up his teammate to even get that shot off. And, you know, deflections happen. Those things happen. It's unfortunate for the keeper. Now to the second half. Columbia still up 1-0 off the corner kit. Abel Aguilar with a touch and tail. Gutierrez puts it home for a 2-0 lead. Paul, a good run by Aguilar sets yeah, it up. Look at that touch by Aguilar. That's what really delivered this goal. Nice cross from the, the player, but the Aguilar, nice little fine little flick touch to the back post. Makes it easier for his teammate to touch it in the back of the net. Greece, primarily a defensive team, goes on the attack later in the 63rd minute. Look at the nice cross by Gekas, header. Bangs off the crossbar right there. Then in the 85th minute, Jurgo Samaras gets a good look from just outside the box. His shot is wide, keeping Piratico off the board. Then in the extra time, Colombia with a little salt in Greece's wound. James Rodriguez makes it a 3-0 three, three game. Colombia picks up three points with a 3-0 win. How do you like the play so far in the World Cup? Well, I mean, it's just unbelievable how teams continue to score three goals. I know the game Mexico wins, it was only 1-0, but they actually scored three goals. So they're basically shattering all scoring records in this World Cup. And it just goes to show you playing in Brazil with the excitement of the beautiful game is yeah. really happening on that soil. It must be something in the air. In your eyes, Brazil, the favorite, they're going to win it on home soil? Based on how they play against Croatia, yeah. I think they're definitely the team to beat. All right, we're going to take our first time out still ahead. What will the U.S. Most, uh, miss most about Landon Donovan not being on their roster? Plus, soccer gods not too kind to the U.S. What is the likelihood the red, white, and blue gets out of the group of death? And England and Italy will square off on the pitch. We'll head out to Fox and Hounds as fans get ready for the match coming up on the Sports Zone. I'm Ion LA's Tina Malave, and we're in beautiful San Diego featuring your San Diego Insider Tips. Little Italy in downtown San Diego is a quaint and lively neighborhood filled with outdoor cafes, restaurants, art galleries, and boutiques. Little Italy's Farmer's Market on Saturday mornings has breathtaking views of San Diego Bay. Start your day with fresh coffee, live entertainment, and amazing local food. For the full list of 50 Insider Tips, visit sandiego.org slash 50 Insider Tips. Hi, Jennifer. I'm from Coit. We're looking for dirty air ducts. Well, you've come to the right place. Have you noticed any excessive dust or pet odors? Oh, we do have Teddy who sheds a lot, and we live very close to the freeway. Right now, save 40% on carpet, upholstery, air duct, drapery, wood floor, tile and grout, and natural stone cleaning. All the dirt, the dander, there must have been, I don't know, 10 pounds of it. We have definitely noticed a huge difference since Coit came out and cleaned our air duct. Call 1-800-4-COIT today and save 40%. How many times have you sat down at your old dinner table and wished you had a new one? If price has been holding you back, then Mathis Brothers is a great place to make that wish come true. We have almost a hundred dining tables in our showroom to choose from, with dozens of options for under a thousand. Many available with matching pieces like servers, chinas, and buffets. You'll find your style at your price right here. All in stock and ready to wake up your new dining room tomorrow. Only at Mathis Brothers, just west of the 15, on the 10 in Ontario. Live a full life. The new Lexus CT Hybrid with an EPA estimated 42 MPG. The further you go, the more interesting it gets. Lease the 2014 CT200H for $299 a month for 24 months. See your Lexus dealer. You're watching SportsZone from ABC7. 
And welcome back, everybody. I'm Rob Fukuzaki alongside Hall of Famer Paul Caligiri, and it's the first week of the World Cup. Now, for the first time in four World Cups, Landon Donovan will not be representing the red, white, and blue. Paul, you can't convince me the pride of Redlands isn't one of the top 23 players in the U.S. Well, definitely, it was a shock to every U.S. fan, including soccer players, his teammates, and what have it. There must be a reason. We really don't know the clear reason. Mm -hmm. And I think the bottom line is Coach Klingsman wants to have players that are dedicated, that fits his mold, and what he believes is going to be the winning mm -hmm. ingredient. Personally, I, I think that Lana Donovan is our, our greatest goal scorer. He scores you know, a goal one every, every three games, and we may need someone like that during this World Cup. Do you think it was something internal? Possibly between Landon and Klingsman. Well, I mean, it, it caught everyone by surprise, and it's a shock. And um, there's been little t talks about that, but definitely that ri raises speculation that there could be something underlining behind the decision. Yeah, what, what do you think uh, Team USA is going to miss the most without Landon on the team? Obviously, his leadership. I think the bottom line is this goal scoring ability. Okay. I mean, we supposed to be in the group of, group of death, mm -hmm. and um, you know, we pretty much anticipate the fact that we may need a goal somewhere along the line, and. Um, he scores goals. Yeah, absolutely. He's the uh, leading scorer, the all-time leading scorer in MLS history. And shortly after he was left off the roster, had one of his best games of the season or over the last couple of years. Now the soccer gods were not kind to the U.S. during the World Cup draw, putting them in the dreaded group of death. Now you say that the United States is calling it the group of death. The U.S., who are the 13th ranked team in the world by FIFA, they are in Group G, along with number two Germany, Portugal, who is ranked number four, and Ghana, 37th ranked. Paul, boy, did the soccer gods have it out for the U.S.? Well, I mean, when you tally up those numbers, the second, the fourth, the 13th, and the 37th ranked teams in the world, I mean, one of the te teams, Ghana, even though they're ranked below us, they've had us... Uh, their number, we had their number. They had our number, you mm -hmm. know, defeating us twice in previous World Cups. So that makes it even more difficult. In your eyes, you you don't consider this the group of death. Well, I, I believe that the England, Italy, Costa Rica, Uruguay is a very strong mm -hmm. group, and Group D is a very difficult group. And um, I think they have worthy opponents to really make that claim, saying that's the group of death. Germany and Portugal are the favorites to come out of this group and advance to the knockout round. Paul, can you see Germany or Portugal winning the whole enchilada? Well, D Germany is definitely one of the favorites. Everyone knows Cristiano Ronaldo from Portugal. So, I mean, they're two top favorites in the World Cup, and that's going to be really interesting to see how this all plays out. I believe the United States team is very confident. I've been on the other side being the underdog, and these players are definitely going into this World Cup believing they can win every game. You have to have that attitude, and the Americans do. How big of an impact will Ronaldo's injury impact um, Portugal? Well, I mean, he's a fantastic player, and I think when you're on the top, when you're on the field and you're looking at a player and you say, I know that's Cristiano Ronaldo, or I know that's Messi, and, and there are certain players you really don't really give that much two cents to. It's like, okay, here yeah. comes a player and I'm defending him. In this case, he's going to be heavily lost because of that a aspect. What is the likelihood that one of these two stumbles and the U.S. advances to the round of 16? Could that happen? Well, they have to play each other. Mm -hmm. And um, we played Portugal in 2002 and defeated them. And in the same World Cup in 2002, I believe that we had the better of Germany in the quarterfinals. And we spoke about that earlier in the show where the goal was not allowed. Had goal and technology been there, it may have been a different result. So anything could happen. This is the World Cup. Pele said it best. The ball is round. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Does Ghana have a chance to get out of this group? Well, I think there's little talks about Ghana. Ghana is a team that has won the U20 World Cup. This is the group that carried them through, and they've carried these players on. So it's a good period for them, and mm -hmm. you never know. I mean, these guys are very talented and, you know, individually gifted, and we'll see what happens. All right, the American outlaws, the U.S. Uh, soccer fanatics chant is, I believe that we will win. But U.S. manager Jurgen Klinsmann isn't feeling that uh, positive. He said... The U.S. has no chance of winning this year's World Cup. Jurgen is blunt, but is he realistic? I'm not sure why he came out and said yeah. that, because he, that's not how you think as an athlete. He's been one of the top athletes in this game in his period. Maybe he's trying to be encouraging the opponent that we are the underdog, and we know that, and not take us too serious. Um, but let's be realistic. This is the World Cup. You yeah. take every opponent serious. If you were a player on Jurgen Klinsmann's team and he comes out and says that, what are you thinking? You, you think game by game. 
you have to go about that. And here in other sports, just like we did throughout the series of the Stanley Cup with the Kings, this next game, we've got a lot of work to do. But certainly you have to believe that you could take it. You, you dream of winning the championships. That's mm -hmm. what would, that drives you to be successful. And I think the players do believe that. And I'm not sure how the players are taking that kind of comment. Well, Klinsman had a big hand in, of, of course, uh, developing uh, Germany. Can he do the same for the United States? Well, he brought a lot of young players in 2006 mm -hmm. when he took over as the team manager for Germany. And it, it, it kind of rattled things. But what he did do is he brought in five young strikers and he played an offensive game. Mm -hmm. I think he's going into a more defensive mode with the Un United States team where I believe that we want to be more ambitious and our character of Americans is to attack and play soccer and go at them. All right, we're going to step aside for a moment. Still ahead, we'll get you ready for the other games on today's slate. And we'll head out to Fox and Hounds Live, where English and Italy fans are getting ready for the big match. Hello. Coming up on the Sports Zone. <laughs> We are born makers, so we went the extra mile and made a car that does the same. Introducing the first and only midsize sedan with a standard nine-speed transmission. The all-new Chrysler 200, America's import. Things have changed. Well-qualified lessees get the all-new 2015 Chrysler 200 Limited for $229 a month. Look what I put together, cheddar and honey nut Chex Mix. Get out of here. I made this belt with traditional bold and peanut butter chocolate Chex Mix. Oh, cool. <laughs> you guys are cute. <laughs> I've got trail mixed peanut lover, chipotle cheddar, dark chocolate, hot and spicy, turtle, cookies and cream, Italian herbs and Parmesan, sour cream and onion, and brownie supreme Chex Mix. And it rotates. <laughs> 20 flavors, lots of pieces. Chex Mix, pick your mix. Now try popped white cheddar and sweet and salty. Here you go. Angus steak. That's the real deal right there. Don't look now, here comes the pie. <laughs> here comes the pie. Ooh, pie. I want a piece of pie. Pow, pow, pie, pie. <laughs> We love pie. Delicious, fresh Angus steaks. Buy any steak and get a slice of award-winning pie for free. Coco's Pie makes everything better. Get incredible savings from Empire today on beautiful new carpet and flooring. It's Empire's whole house sale. Buy two rooms and get carpet or flooring for the rest free when you pay for padding and installation. Shop at home for brands you trust, like Mohawk, Bowu, and Armstrong. Don't miss, buy two, get the rest free. As many rooms as you want, even your whole house. Schedule now. 800-588-2300-EMPIRE. Today. You're watching Sports Zone from ABC7. And welcome back, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Italy and England are getting ready for the match, and we'll get you ready as we go live to our Melissa McBride. Who's with a bunch of fans at a local watering hole, and I'm sure, Melissa, the pints are flowing. Rob, the pints are full and they are flowing. Lots of fans are here. England and Italy, of course, uh, next up here. We're at the Fox and the Hounds in Studio City, and this bar is packed. A lot of these fans... Folks, if you're not already in the door, you're not going to be able to watch the next game here. Now, of course, because the World Cup is only every four years, these fans have been looking forward to today's game, especially this one, England and Italy. Some of these fans have been here for several hours watching all of the games that are going to be on today. Just finished up watching Costa Rica and Uruguay, and of course, they are eagerly.